The only true Cinderella alive in any power conference is UNLV out in the whack. They were swept by the Lobos twice in the regular season, but Bill Baino says his team is playing as well as anybody in the country right now. To Bob Carpenter and Jimmy Dykes at the Thomas and Mack Center for the final, guys. Thank you, Chris Fowler. And we are four minutes and 36 seconds into this one. Took about two minutes for anybody to score. Vegas got an early three to take a 5-0 lead. Then they let 8-3. And New Mexico now with Kenny Thomas getting six. Back to 8-6. Now, Jimmy, the big key to this ball game tonight, UNLV has to score with Shields and company. But defense, is that the number one priority tonight? Yeah, it is for UNLV because New Mexico, they got a great inside-outside balance. Kenny Thomas has really been checking people's oil in that low block area through. <laughs> Throughout this tournament and Clayton Shields is the guy that's really been lighting people up I mean you look at the numbers in the first two ball games that he's put up he's been the rebel killer averaging 17 points and shooting 40 percent from that three-point stripe at 6'8 you are looking at a future NBA shooting two guard with Clayton Shields I mean this is what you're matched up against tonight a guy that again at 6'8 is going to elevate over the top of the defense and get good looks you look at the release the rotation and the result most of the times out of Clayton Shields Here's a guy that is in a jump shooting mode in this tournament. He's only averaging one free throw attempt a ball game so far with the last two. So he's spotting up and knocking it down with consistency right now. Running Rebels on offense. Simmons receiving it up high. Dickel and Keith with the guards. Simmons inside. Tyro Nesby right now. Jocelyn down there with Lamont Long. Simmons got loose. Knocks down the jumper. Kevin coming off a 21-point game against Fresno last night. And he has two field goals here. 10-6 Rebels. New Mexico went to a switching man-to-man -man defense that time, and they didn't communicate. Simmons gets freed up for the open jump shot. Long. Right side off the rim, and Kenny Thomas with a rebound. He's had a whole bunch of touches early. Gibson, little dribble penetration. Can't knock it down. Tyrone Nesby, the outlet for Mark Dickel. Bobby UNLV, they want to get the game in transition two or three times per half for, for a couple of minutes. Nesby, that's his second three from the left corner. Tyrone with a half dozen already. He was full out of eight beyond the arc last night. Having himself a huge tournament. Yeah, stats over the last two or three ball games are critical right now to break down as you prepare, and stats tells you that Nesby is really shooting the ball well right now. Won't go for Kevin Henry, who hit the game-winning three against Tulsa a couple of days ago. That was a narrow escape for the Lobos, who won that game 60-59. They knocked off a tough defensive TCU club yesterday, 80-73 with a magnificent second half. Looks like a Nesby foul down on the baseline. Keith and Dickel, the guards for UNLV, and Brian Keith, such a great three-point shooter. Kambala down low. And, of course, it's Shields and Thomas, the two offensive threats for New Mexico. Donovan Stewart now will check in. In a ball game against the Lobos on this floor two weeks ago, he had a career-high 15 rebounds. By the way, Casper's Kambala, that foul, every night it seems like he gets too early. And he's out of the game. UNLV in a 2-3 matchup zone. Now this defense has been very good for Billy Bain over the last six or seven ball games. And he felt like that this could be a real key tonight. New Mexico has not seen this defense from the Rebels so far this season. David Gibson, the senior guard running the offense for the Lobos. Lamont Long, a leaner. Thomas keeps it alive, puts it on the floor. And he took a bit of a bump. I saw his feet go shuffling. But somebody had given him a shove, and it'll be Donovan Stewart. Watch Kenny Thomas. I mean, here's a guy that gets in offensive rebounding position by boxing off, and he's 6'8 and wide. So not only can he beat you above the rim, he can beat you below on proper position. And his ability to get to the free throw strike is very important for Dave Bliss. Looking for point number seven already. That gives him 1,430, excuse me, 1,442, top 10 all time at New Mexico. He's in the top five in rebounding, top three in blocks, and the three-point shooting of Royce Olney. all whack performer, sorely missed by this ball club. But Clayton Shields has picked up that perimeter very nicely for him. Kenny Thomas with eight already. He's already had two double-doubles in this tournament. 
Well, you watch New Mexico, they will switch some on the perimeter in their man defense. If you do that, you must communicate and make sure you keep proper matchups. Takes an experienced club to pull it off properly. Nesby with a low liner. Rebound Clayton Shields. Nobody for the Lobos has scored other than Kenny Thomas yet. Clayton Shields could take care of that in a hurry. The kick for Lamont Long. He finally knocks it down from the corner. That was a two. Here's Gibson after the steal. Three on two. He's got a trailer. Ball stripped away from Thomas, who is thick and slam. That could have been a real momentum builder for New Mexico. You know he feels like if it's strictly a half-court game, then they lose the basketball game. They've got to get going up and down for a couple of minutes at a time each half two or three different occasions. Donovan Stewart with that three-point miss, now 9 of 30 outside the arc. He looked a bit reluctant to shoot it. The net was still tied up after that last break down the floor, so a quick whistle to get the twine back in order. And the Lobos will throw it in. New Mexico, two seed out of the mountain, and Billy Baino's Rebels, the number five seed out of the mountain division. You got two shooters in the ballgame on the perimeter right now from New Mexico, Shields and Henry. Other guys who play for the drive and you double down on Thomas and make him a passer. There's Shields. With the shot clock at about three. That ball hit the iron and rimmed out. Here's Dickel in transition. Donovan Stewart. Jump stop on the baseline. He's 0 for 2 now. But Dickel really pushing that basketball from defense to offense every opportunity, trying to speed the game up. Shield still unable to knock one down. Stewart quick on the transition, yes! Well, you like that from a guy who just missed two shots in a row. Rebels have their five-point lead for the third time here in the first nine minutes. Bob Donovan Stewart is a runner in transition along that right side. You've got to run with him. Can't allow him to catch and go up and finish. Gibson way short and right on the three. And a timeout. Just over nine minutes in. As Jimmy Dykes mentioned, Rebels want to get the pace going. Donovan Stewart to finish. Rebels 15-10. As you may have read on the internet, in a national tasting of ice and regular beers, Brewmasters named one beer the best tasting beer in America. Old Milwaukee. So when you want the best tasting beer, now you know what to ask your server for. Phone Patrol from 1-800-COLLECT. Attention citizens! 1-800-COLLECT is now 10 cents a minute every evening. 10 cents a minute? That's cheap. <laughs> Isn't saving money fun? 1-800-COLLECT, 10 cents a minute every evening. It's at home in the Sahara. It's at home in the Australian outback. The newly redefined 1998 Isuzu Trooper. It's even at home. Well, at home. Lease one now for $328 a month for 36 months with $1,998 due at least signing. And take one home, wherever that might be. I'm grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house fire, a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder, he treated us as a neighbor, as a friend. I gave him a check right away. We went from there to putting the pieces back together. He's not a hero in the sense of a, a sports hero or a movie star. He's a quiet hero. He looks out for everyone in the neighborhood. It's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life. Well, night after night here in Las Vegas, we've seen party after party. Will there be another one for the hometown fans tonight? They'll have to overcome the strength of Kenny Thomas to win this WAC championship. Now watch, hold it right there. Look where he catches the ball, first of all. He's deep in that box area. And UNLV feels like Kenny Thomas is going to get his 20, 24 points. That's fine. What we're going to try to do is shut down the perimeter. And you look so far in this ball game, Kenny Thomas, 16 touches. He's awfully involved already. And we've only played just over nine minutes. 
So UNLV, they're giving up something on the inside to take away a strength on the outside, and so far it's working. But Clayton Shields is 0 for 3. Two of those three-pointers. And so if they can stop the perimeter game, that's a big part of their defensive plan. New Mexico, after timeouts, they likes to double up on you, and that time Nickel handles it well off the dribble. Benny Thomas deflecting that pass. I mean, every coach in America, they understand in staff means as you prepare, what are we going to take away and what are we going to give up? In New Mexico, they feel like their strength is on the inside and outside, so UNLV says, fine, we'll let you have your inside stuff tonight, but you're not going to beat us from that three-point shooting. Nickel hooking it down low to Simmons. He was doubled. Keith. Sometimes he runs hot and cold. He was very hot last night, then got cold and finished 6 of 19, but he's got a couple of early threes here, Rebels by 8. Well, over the last four or five games, he's been the Stradivarius of three-point shooters for <laughs> Billy Baino. That's how well he's shooting at basketball. Sounds like string music to me. <laughs> Clayton Shields barely getting iron, and he's 0 for 4. Dickel on the wing for Stewart. Releasing down low, Isaiah Epps put it on the floor. Much too strong for the jump hook. Kevin Simmons always seems to be in the right place. A half dozen for him. And a 20-second timeout for Dave Bliss. You know, good balance offense out of Billy Baino's squad. Look at the last two trips. Dickel, just enough penetration right there to get the ball inside. And and then watch the ball movement out to Keefe, and you can't leave that guy again. He can really light you up, and that's pure. I mean, that's a stroke right now that you've got to be aware of. I mean, I think this is important. Make Kenny Thomas play defense. Go at him. You see him standing and watching. And if you get that guy having to defend, then it takes away from his offense, and that's a good balance right now for the guys in red. UNLV, five consecutive wins. They've won nine of their last 11. Three-pointers, they're at 50% right now. The Lobos unable to do much. In fact, their only three-pointer, guess who hit it? Kenny Thomas. Kenny Thomas, Bobby, has been called for nine fouls in two games in this tournament. So that tells you, you go at him defensively and maybe get him in foul trouble, then you've got a leg up on this thing. Lobos, three out of 15 shooting early here. Ten and a half minutes in. It's uh, early, but it's time to get warmed up. Thomas the kick. Gibson. Shields. Almost threw it away. Gibson saves it. Shot clock at four. Shot clock at two. Just got iron. Good defensive stop by the Rebels. Donovan Stewart for Dickel. Simmons looking at Shields. Now here's something to, to talk about. Dave Bliss, in my opinion, can take away three or four baskets a game off of preparation. It's tough to do that against UNLV because their offense is pretty much just one-on-one -on -one stuff. Oh, my! Brian Keith way out there. That's nine for the junior out of Winchester, Mass. And the Rebels lead by 13. Henry for three. Lobos can't get the lid off. Look at Keefe, he's gonna start down low and then stop out to the perimeter and watch Dickel penetrates. Where's my buddy? Boom, gets those feet set. And if you're assigned to Brian Keefe, you cannot let him separate from the defense. I mean, right now he's not hitting anything but the bottom. You limit his touches, if he does touch it, you better be face to face. This guy's gonna put up big numbers on you. Lobos throw it in after David Hall reversed a call. 10 unanswered points over three and a half minutes. Talk about a home team with momentum. Has having the tournament in your building meant more to any club in the nation this week than the running Rebels? I doubt it. Shot clock under 10 again. Henry. Boy, they needed that. Now the net's tied up again after that ball swished through. Kevin Henry, the freshman out of Denton, Texas. With 21 seconds left, he beat Tulsa two days ago. He gets his team on the way back with that one. Tired of all the gimmicks car dealers use nowadays? Chances are it's nothing but hype. 
That's why at Henderson Chevrolet, we deliver what we promise. Our large inventory of new and used vehicles is discounted with our absolute lowest price. Right now, you can drive a new Blazer for $299 a month. No negotiation, no commissions, no hidden fees, no gimmicks. Discover the difference today at Henderson Chevrolet in the Valley Auto Mall. Julio Cesar Chavez, Mexico's greatest champion, a man without a rival. Until now, Miguel Angel Gonzalez, 42 wins in 43 fights. Is he the successor to the Chavez crown? It's Chavez versus Gonzalez, plus Ricardo Lopez and Christy Martin. Three world championship fights Saturday, March 7th, live on pay-per-view. Order Chavez Gonzalez now. Call 1-800-885-FIGHT. How do you prove you're the king of college hoops? Just log on to ESPN.com and enter the Tournament Challenge presented by Pizza Hut on ESPN Sports Zone. To enter, fill out your brackets, compete against thousands of other fans, make the right picks, and be crowned king of college hoops. Log on to ESPN Sports Zone, and you can win a trip for two to the 1999 Men's Championship, hotel accommodations, and 64 pizzas from Pizza Hut. The Tournament Challenge on ESPN Sports Zone. Sign up now! That's Abby Garcheck, 25 points earlier today as the New Mexico women beat Rice for the WAC Women's Championship. What a ball game she and Katie Kern had as the Lobo women celebrate their championship. Will the men be able to do it tonight? Well, we're going to see they need more shooting out of guys like Kern. Now watch what happens. Simmons defensively is on Henry. Now watch, they're in a zone defense. Hold it right there. Look at Clayton Shields sneaking along the baseline. And as a result, Simmons now has to pay attention to Shields. That's what frees up Henry. You get two shooters on the same side of the floor and make that back guy in the zone decide, who am I going to cover? He went with Shields, and Henry stepped up and knocked it down. That's good offense. Obviously, threes a factor in this ballgame, especially early for UNLV with Clay and Keith hitting a trio of them. They release him. Will this be four? Well, long with it. Kenny Thomas, the uncontested rebound. The best offense New Mexico can have against this zone is getting Kenny Thomas on the same side of the floor as shooters. Because then you've got to start making decisions defensively. What do we give up? Shield stays cold, way short. You saw the wingspan of Isaiah Epps on that rebound. Thomas down low, eight points and six boards. But UNLV can run some different people at him. It's Isaiah Epps in there right now. Simmons down there with Shields. Nickel is waiting for the kick out. Simmons waiting, adjusting, can't score. Donovan Osborne. Excuse me, Donovan Stewart. Keith. Had it confused with Donovan Osborne. He used to pitch here at UNLV. <laughs> and he's a pretty good pitcher, too, by the way. And uh, by the way, Donovan Stewart is a right-hander. Osborne is a lefty. <laughs> I guess I have spring training on my mind here. We've got some blood shed by David Gibson. Evidently not on the jersey. Donovan Stewart will check out. I knew I was going to lay one Donovan Osborne on us during this tournament. And that was obviously... Yeah, stepping out of bounds. Yeah, right on the... That's where he got his elbow cut. Right on the baseline. 6.45, first half. Rebels by 10. You know, UNLV, they started playing this zone because of that eight-man rotation went down to seven with Greedy Daniels out of the lineup, and then they realized, see, this thing works for us pretty well, and they've stayed with it. Knocking down the three, David Gibson. Made the whack ball defensive squad for the second straight year. He's one of those chip-in guys when it comes to offense. Simmons takes a bump. Might have been Gibson with the help defense. Gibson's playing 40 minutes a game in this tournament. I mean, back-to-back -back nights, he's gone the distance. The reason why, with only out of the lineup, he's the only point guard now they can put on the floor. Only got a lot of minutes, Bob, as the backup point guard. And with him out, Gibson's got to go the marathon. How about this? That was the first team foul against the Lobos. 13 minutes and 40 seconds into the game. Randy Daniels checking in. Well, you got a veteran crew that understands the championship situation. Let's let the thing be settled by the players. And I like the way they're calling the ball game. Stepping on the baseline. Now that's an offensive foul. 
Reedy Daniels putting his head down and getting the charge. Yeah, you talk about David Hall, Scott Thornley, and Mark Reichley. Three officials from this part of the country who know these players individually very well. They've watched these guys for a number of years. You saw Greedy Daniels wrap that hand around the defense and gain the advantage and proper call. We head the other way. Lobo's a chance to possibly get it back to four. They were down by 13 going into the under eight minute timeout. Both clubs really only play six, maybe seven guys. So I think they're both happy right now with the flow and the speed of this ball game because of it. Lamont Long to dump down to Thomas. Epps avoiding the contact. Thomas, little pull up, nicely done. Isaiah Epps thought he was going to pull right into him. And then Kenny just pulled right back. He's into double figures. Bobby, he's so quick. I mean, his footwork on that low block area. That allows him to score. Rejected by Thomas. Return to sender, huh? Address unknown. Over 170 blocks in his career. Watch the Lobos with an 8-0 run. Bobby, watch Kenny Thomas work on offense. He gets his body on your body and really gets in great position. Shields still can't hit a basket. Trying to save it, throws it away. Well, you like to see Kenny Thomas involved because there's been times throughout the season that he's been in a drought on both ends. And look at the defense. See Simmons and Thomas going at one another. And Maybe a little bit of a slip, a little bit of a push. Clayton Shields unable to help out Kenny Thomas yet. 0 for 6, and 5 of those from beyond the arc. Daniels running the point. Not a good pass. Transition, Kevin Henry. Billy Bano calls a timeout. We might see Mark Dickel back in there. It'll be a 20. For UNLV as their 13-point lead is down to three. You know what? There was no defensive balance that time out of UNLV, and Greedy Daniels is the point guard. He's the one that makes the pass, but he's had a pulled hamstring. As a result, he's not in position to sprint to the other end and be that defender back to stop the easy transition out of New Mexico, and Henry makes him pay. We'll know a lot more tomorrow night that we don't know right now. And you'll find out a lot about it at 6.30 Eastern with our men's tournament selection special. Quinn Buckner will join Dick Vitale, Digger Phelps, and our host Chris Fowler, presented by GTE. Then, for the first time, you'll see the women's bracket at 7.30. Robin Roberts at her side, Mimi Griffin and Rebecca Lobo. That's hosted by Robin and presented by State Farm. 6.30, 7.30 tomorrow night. We'll wrap up championship week as you'll find out where your favorite teams are going. Lobos now with a 10-0 run to match the earlier 10-point run of the Rebels. Nesby, nice little touch. Time Tyrone Nesby with eight after hitting a couple of threes. You've got to have a versatile defender to stop Tyrone Nesby because he can take you out on the floor, he can take you inside and score. Not only a versatile defender, but a committed defender because he is in attack mode most of the ball game. They dump it down to Shields. Still can't score. Got his own. Blocked, but fouled. There's another guy that plays with a blue blazer. He's got versatility to his game. I mean, there's several of them tonight. Look at Clayton Shields. He's a terrific three-point shooter, but then he has the height at 6'8 to go inside and post up a smaller defender. New Mexico is a very interchangeable team on the offensive and defensive end. That allows them to post big guards up. It also allows Dave Bliss to do some switching in his half-court defense. When you're 0 for 7, maybe a free throw gets you started. Right now, Clayton Shields can't make any kind of shot. Now, he didn't come out and go through the entire warm-up period before this ball game, Bob, because of a little bit of a pulled hamstring. And he went through and shot about six or seven layups, went back in and got the thing taped. And that may be bothering him a little bit. It's more of a Charlie Horse type situation for him. Randall's holding the free throw. 3.50 before halftime. Running Rebels got off to a quick start, but lately the Lobos of Dave Bliss with most of the momentum.
to see your new line of clubs? Uh, tomorrow. Yeah. My guy's on his way right now. So, Al, when are we going to see your new line of clubs? It's already up. There's business as usual, and there's e-business as usual. HP, expanding possibilities. I thought you were going to buy some Bud Light. Do you see any Bud Light? No. Well, then. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Where'd you find that one? Behind the milk. UNLV again trying to knock off the club it lost twice to during the regular season. They did it to Utah, and they've lost twice to New Mexico. Clayton Shields has been a big part of both of those ball games. He had 19 in Albuquerque with five boards, and then 15 and nine rebounds here a couple of weeks ago. But tonight, a totally, totally different story. Well, he's the ignition that starts this ball club. His three-point shooting really adds a lot of energy to this team. And again, UNLV, their plan of attack coming in. We're going to give up something on the inside to take away the outside, and so far it's working for him. As expected, Dickel back in to replace Greedy Daniels at the point. Nesby shot way short. Simmons stripped away. Donovan Stewart the miss. And then Thomas the last to touch it. Rebels get it back. Bobby, the one area that Vegas has hurt New Mexico in the first two matchups between these squads has been on the boards. You see UNLV awfully active when the ball's above the rim on the offensive glass. Dickel for Keith. He's got another three, four of them, here in the first half. I and mean, that's off an out-of-bounds play. Four out of six beyond the arc. Shields runs into his man, Stewart. Scott Thornley with the whistle down on the baseline. And evidently, Donovan Stewart did not give Shields any room in which to catch that ball. Watch Brian Keefe, he starts on the left side of the floor. Now, he acts like he's a screener, and that's what frees him up. That's a great way to get a shooter open. Let him be a screener first, force the guy covering him to help just a little bit, then boom, pop to the perimeter. That's what got Brian Keefe open. I liked it. Clayton Shields. You see a lot of low scoring, tough to score type games at this point in the season, Bob, because clubs are so well prepared. They're facing each other for the basically the third time in those conference tournaments, and this is nothing out of the normal. Simmons feeling his way along the baseline. Suddenly the Rebels missing some close in shots. Keith on the floor, and the Rebels have the possession arrow. Man, stand up and applaud, though. Everybody in the building, doesn't matter. You just got to appreciate the effort out of both guys. I mean, the scramble for the loose ball, and boom, right there. Keith gets involved, Gibson gets involved, and that's how you play the game. If you're going to play it, play it right, and that's how you do it. That's the kind of thing Quinn Buckner was talking about during the Big Ten tournament today. Hustle plays, he calls it. Getting your team that extra possession. Let's see if they take advantage now. Rebels by five, two and a half minutes before halftime. We're going to get out on Keith now with David Gibson. Simmons, nickel flashes by him. Keith for three. Oh, my, he's got five of them. Five out of seven. You can't switch. Defensively, you cannot switch when you're facing the guy that's shooting the ball as well as Keith. And that's what's getting him open right now. Just a little hesitation between the two defenders. Keith catches it, and he's making them pay. Having the kind of first half he had last evening. Thomas, quick and he trouble. Bobby, you got to play straight man. I mean, watch Keith right here. He gets freed up because guys are switching on him. And all you do now is say, hey, forget the switching. Somebody step up and check that guy the remainder of this ball game. Because right now, he is testing the strength of the net. Look at that.
I, mean, I think that's what Dave Bliss has to be talking about. You got a guy right now running around on the, on the perimeter that's making a killing beyond the half moon. If you're going to switch, you better do it quickly. You better talk. And if not, we're going straight man. Well, tomorrow, championship week wraps up. How about this for an ending? First to the ACC, Carolina and Duke. Haven't met the league final, by the way, since 92. Oklahoma, the upstart team in the Big 12. They'll take on the powerful Jayhawks in the Big 12 championship. And then the Big West, Utah State, Cal State Fullerton tonight. The other semi there. Pacific and Pat Foster's Nevada Ball Club. They'll decide Short. their finalists a little later this evening. The candy man for Pacific. Talk about someone that's going to make a lot of money someday. It's heading that direction. Yeah, you like size and skill. Watch all the candy tomorrow. Henry, bad looking air ball, way long. Ball actually caught by Kevin Simmons. You know, UNLV, they've really defended the three-point shooting throughout this tournament. They are quick at helping recover situations, and that's what you do to take away those three-point shots. Shot clock at 15. Simmons turning. And a foul. Looks like he was in the act of shooting, according to the official. Clayton Shields with his first. Chris Fowler and Digger Phelps doing duty with our 7-Up Halftime Report coming up. Some wild ones in the ACC today. And uh, we're used to battles in the Big East. Some bubble information from the Pac-10. Arizona, UCLA getting it on today. And to the line goes Kevin Simmons. <laughs> Here's a guy that has a seven or eight man rotation that's really working well right now. Now here's what's dangerous about that, Bobby, is the seven guys that are playing consistently know, I'm in, I'm getting my minutes. There's no one on the bench that's gonna take my spot. So that's a dangerous club because they're full of confidence. They don't get rattled if they miss a shot or make a bad pass, because they know I'm in the game, coach has to play me, and as a result, they're really, really playing good basketball. Long, quick to the glass. And that's the second field goal for Lamont. We're in the final 45 seconds now. Rebels by seven, Rebels by nine. On the roll around by Tyrone Nesby. He's gotten into double figures. Mark Dickel triggered the whole thing though. I mean, that ball went through the net. He gets it, heads the other way, and basically beats the defense down the floor still. I mean, that aggressive push out of Dickel is very important in this ball game. Long again to the baseline. Too deep for a shot. Keeps his dribble. Gibson for Henry. Now they've got it with 10. Dickel watching Gibson who blows by him. Scoring! David Gibson with five. Final second. Dickel watches one off the iron. And the Rebels will lead by seven at the half. The Cinderella story continues. Will it turn into a party later? Kenny Thomas, a quick start. But Chris Fowler, Brian Keefe's shooting. The story of this first half. Absolutely, Bob. Plus, another story, the last two minutes of the half. Bano concerned his team running on fumes often has had trouble, but not tonight. Dickel's been the key for them running the show, protecting the ball. He put out one fire so that New Mexico couldn't come back. Now, what Bano has to do at halftime, just keep them convinced, Chris. You can put them down, you can get it going. Dickel, stay cool with the ball, and they can pull this off. Lobos came from 11 down to beat TCU in the semis. Coming up on our 7-Up Halftime Report, scores and highlights. There is still one other Cinderella in the country out there. We'll tell you about it. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. 7-Up and your local 7-Up Butler invite you to try the crisp new taste of 7-Up. And in part by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mpusa.com. I'm Dan Patrick. Good night. Seven Up. Nice. You know you get great lemon lime taste with Seven Up. And you can get great prizes in Seven Up's Reach for More game. Collect labels and game pieces from specially marked packages of Seven Up. Starting March 1st, watch ESPN's Championship Week to match dance, phrases, and win. And if you're a grand prize winner, you and six friends could win a trip to New York City, a tour of ESPN Studios 
and when the day's over, you might have won yourself a new best friend. Give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fess me in. I want to ride to the ridge where the west commences. Gaze at the moon till I lose my senses. Don't fess me in. Thought for those of you married to your job. Every once in a while, have a fling with your wife. Royal Caribbean, like no vacation on earth. This is the Seven Up Halftime Report. A special welcome to the Night Owls, the nine members of the NCAA Selection Committee. We know you're looking in there in Kansas City, especially one of them, Rudy Davalos, who's the athletic director of New Mexico. I want to see what Digger has to say, I'm sure. Uh, we'll talk about the ACC first. Duke and Clemson, the only question in the NCAA tournament, of course, is the seeding for the Blue Devils. Do they need to win the ACC championship to get that one seed in the East and have a chance to play in Greensboro? Well, they had to get by Rick Barnes, Clemson Tigers. It hadn't been easy in the two regular season meetings. It wasn't easy today as Terrell McIntyre in the closing seconds ties the game at 64. Then the freshman, William Avery, takes the final two shots. His follow shot goes with three tenths of a second. Watch again, Digger. They didn't touch it. The discipline there. Clean cut. Clean cut. Clean goal. It's over. McLeod wanted to touch it, but he kept his hand off of it. No basket interference. And the Blue Devils go to the ACC championship game. Duke only shot four for 17, shooting threes. 18 for 28 in the foul line. They were down 31-19 against Clemson, but came back enough just to win, Chris. The first semi, equally dramatic. Maryland and Carolina. Watch the Terrapins of Vinick Easy. Knocked to the floor, but hits the shot. Hits the free throw. Terrapins by two in the final minutes. Now the final 15 seconds. Shimon Williams. Suckers LaRon Profit into the air, goes to the line for three with the Tar Heels down two. He hits the first two. The best free throw shooter in the history of Carolina basketball. This is the lead. He kind of short armed it after they iced it what seemed like forever. So we go to overtime. And the turnover. Vince Carter to Williams, who made up for that miss by playing an outstanding overtime. Tar Heels scored in their first nine possessions to get the win. Well, I still think Maryland iced at least a four seed, but North Carolina, you gotta be concerned. Coda for 30 minutes, only three assists, four turnovers, no points. Jamison first half held to eight points. And the major concern for Anton Jamison is a groin that he has a slight injury. He's gonna be questionable for the championship game against the Blue Devils tomorrow afternoon, one o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Their first meeting for a championship since 92 in that tournament. In the Big East, another classic, what's been a great tournament, Syracuse and Connecticut. On the break here, watch Kevin Freeman go down to the floor hard. He would leave the game with a hip and a wrist injury, but he would gut it out in return. Obscena, the alley-oop to Bergen. Syracuse goes on a run, but Connecticut responds here. Khalid El Amin, the freshman, a poor start, but a strong finish. The layup, UConn up by six, and then they put it away. Off the miss, El Amin. To Rashamal Jones, collects it, goes in, Connecticut. The regular season champs, and now the Big East Tournament champs, headed to the dance as probably a two seed. Well, the second half, Syracuse was up eight. UConn with 8.57 to go to the game, going an 18 to three run. But Syracuse, Bergen and Blackwell, in the game up at Syracuse, they went three for 23, and tonight they go eight for 24. That's where their offense fell apart. The freshman Elamin is the tournament MVP. Atlantic 10, Xavier and George Washington. Lumpkin on the break, falls down, but gets it to Lenny Brown. He scores, he gets the foul. Xavier, after trailing two zip, never trailed George Washington the rest of the night here. Brown, big. The steal, Lumpkin, his backcourt mate with Glenn. Xavier's excellent backcourt, doing their job. The big guys doing their job. This is James Posey. He has turned in double-double after double-double. <laughs> and a nice little reacts there as Xavier wins their first ever A-10 championship by 14. Well, Braggs played big tough inside for Xavier's second half, getting 14 of 17 points. But for the game, 20 turnovers by Xavier for 18 big points. No surprise in Conference USA, the Bearcats win the title on their own floor. 19 straight win at the Shoemaker Center. 
DeMarco Johnson held it to 17 points. In the Big Ten, Purdue beats Illinois by 21. They set up a championship game meeting with Michigan, which knocks out the Cinderella Golden Gophers. Michigan making 13 threes today. Is this the new Michigan, the one that could show up and have potential getting to the Final Four? Well, the committee members looking in Arizona State, this may have answered the question. They take on USC there. This was a USC team that is not going to go to the postseason, but it's been a total spoiler in the Pac-10 this last weekend. They knocked off Arizona, beat them for the first time all year in a Pac-10 conference game. They came out, they played very loose, and the Sun Devils, a shorthanded team. They only used six players in the rotation. Don Newman, trying to think of everything, Digger. He took them to Venice Beach, trying to get them to relax yesterday. But there are no match tonight. Well, I think you, they needed a split this weekend with UCLA and Southern Cal, and you can see they did, losing to Washington, beating Washington State. They may become the fourth team that gets in from the WAC, but, I mean, for the Pac-10, who may only get four. Arizona-UCLA was a classic. The Wildcats trail most of the game, rallied late to get their first win at Pauley Pavilion since 1993-30 for Michael Dickerson. We're coming back. This halftime report is presented by 7-Up. 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler invite you to try the crisp new taste of 7-Up. Welcome to Mascot Basketball, brought to you by 7-Up's Reach for More Game, where you can win by matching any of your 7-Up labels or game pieces with tonight's phrase. Hello, I'm Dan Patrick. Tonight, Pony tries to go where no pony has gone before. The Mascot Finals. Pony. You can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. If your label or game piece matches this phrase, you're a winner, so check your game piece for details. If not, grab a 7-Up and watch tomorrow's finals for a last chance to win. From the gritty stables of Virginia to the Mascot Finals. A great story. Symbols. There are symbols that stand for power, for prestige, for beauty. Symbols that say you are now protected and safe. Symbols for excellence, for value, for a great idea. Symbols for a set of beliefs. There are even symbols for fun. Can a symbol stand for all these things? It depends on the symbol. Basketball game or one of over 6,000 other great prizes. Just look for these limited edition packages. Jesus, Jesus. A handful of taste, a handful of fun. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long Welcome back to the 7-Up Halftime Report. You know, Prairie View a and is a historically black school that does a great job producing engineers, but most of the pub for the athletic program has been negative. 77 straight losses in football. This morning when the sun came up, their basketball team had eight wins against Division I teams and an RPI of 271. But that was before the SWAC final. This is what championship week is about. Prairie View is up four on Texas Southern when Paco Redmond cuts the lead down to one with seven seconds to go. Cameron Sharp, he made one of two free throws, so the margin is two for Prairie View. Randy Bolden, trying to break the hearts of the number seven seed, but the shot doesn't go, and Prairie View, they won three games by a total of eight points. With a 13 and 16 record, they are going to the NCAA tournament, the underdog for the ages. Southland Conference, UT Arlington against Nichols State. James Banks at the end of the first half, doesn't need the bank shot. Rattles it in from three-quarter court. Now, final seconds. Arlington going for the tie, but the shot is after the final horn. So, Nichols State holds on 84-81. They get the automatic bid, only their second ever NCAA tournament appearance. To the SEC, Gamecocks and Rebels. Melvin Watson was brilliant against Ole Miss. He had 27 points, but B.J. Mackey was even better. 37 on the game. They combined for 73% of Carolina's points. 
I didn't know if they're going to be fresh after getting off the court at midnight last night. But well, they did a good job of penetration because that's why Boone and Cissé got in foul trouble early in the game. And then Walken, Mackey and Watson, the first game, only had 26 points when they had that loss to Mississippi, but they made up for it today. Jeff Shepard is questionable to doubtful for Kentucky's championship game tomorrow against South Carolina. Kentucky. In the Big 12, Kansas was impressive. Kansas is really impressive, but I'm still concerned about their 4-for-16 shooting the threes. And, of course, Oklahoma. It's going to be an interesting matchup tomorrow because I don't know if Kansas is going to play a lot of people because they're all banged up. Well, I think that Thomas may still sit out resting for the NCAA tournament. We know LaFrance is expected to play. You can see the final at 3 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN, followed by the Aggies against the winner of Nevada Pacific. Dodge Dakota owners are celebrating. A recent J.D. Power & Associates study ranked Dakota the most appealing compact pickup. But we believe this lease is pretty appealing, too. Oh, it might be hot out there, but this special offer is no mirage. Buy a Dodge Dakota and get air conditioning at no extra charge. So come cool off. See your Southern Nevada Dodge dealer. Play the progressive at Caribbean Stud Poker, and all your dreams could come true. In Laughlin and Vegas, Caribbean Stud's the greatest. With Tower millions and Vino. millions of dollars Stud paid, did you Vino. get Kiss your Vino. share? So <laughs> well then, play the progressive at Caribbean Stud. Baby, can we please go? Located in casinos across Nevada, let it take you to the islands. Caribbean Stud! <laughs> More automatic bids will remind you of the men's tournament selection special. Complete hour, we'll look at it. Joined by Dick Vitale, Quinn Buckner, and a host of coaches at 6.30 Eastern. The women's NCAA selection special presented by State Farm follows at 7.30 Eastern time with Robin Roberts and company. Delaware gets 25 from Daryl Presley to win the America East and the MEAC championship. South Carolina State comes from behind. Yeah, they're down 38-30 with 15 minutes left. And then go on and just outscore Coppin State 36-23 to get to the big dance. After the sixth game of our basketball, Sabado Gigante, Sports Center comes along, scores and highlights, and then it's the big sky following the center. But the second half from the WAC is straight ahead. It is grounded in the belief that for ideas to take flight, they must have wings. The all-new Chrysler Concorde LXI, combining remarkable agility with a 225 horsepower engine so advanced, it provides more power yet uses less fuel. Chrysler Concorde, built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Who says you can't buy taste? My clients do it all the time. Like, let's say I find the most amazing English oh, high-back armchair. Then I better get it in front of them immediately or someone else will. That's why I value GTE Internet. In seconds, I can be online in Tampa while downloading huge files from an auction in Paris. I love shopping in Paris. Especially when it's with someone else's money. What if your car slips off the road in Slippery Rock? Or you need the name of a mechanic in Mechanicsville? Well, if your car is insured by State Farm, just look up the local State Farm agent. Almost anywhere you travel, whether it's a big metropolis or just a little one, a good neighbor is always nearby to help. So if your car gets stolen in Thief River Falls or you have some trouble in Paradise, hey, don't worry about it. State Farm is there. Why do I come out here? Because the playing field's level, but the stairs never are. Because if I can't get frost-brewed Coors Light to the fans cold, those guys in the Rockies froze their butts for nothing. So I scale concrete every night. Because somewhere there's a guy eating peanuts or some nachos, and he's thinking of me. Coors Light! Coors Light! ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it.
Well, just off the Vegas Strip, little New York, New York for you there. Running Rebels by seven, and that seven means something because in each one of its tournaments games, New Mexico has trailed by at least seven. They've never led in this game, and it was UNLV getting the offense started early, really spreading things around. Well, they're getting a great push about every time from defense to offense out of Mark Dickel, and this is the story so far in the first 20 minutes. His ability to push that basketball and then drop it inside or outside. The guy's got nine assists so far in this ball game. They've led to 23 points, 23 of their 30 34 points. This guy's been the trigger guy. The WAC tournament record for a game is 11, set most recently by Dominic Young. Three guards have done that. Look at the Lobo shooting, 32%. UNLV has seven three-pointers and six two-pointers. Here we go, second half. Lobo's with it. Down by seven. Shields still unable to hit a field goal tonight. Ball goes out of bounds over the glass and Clayton Shields is now 0 for 8 and has misfired on all six of his three-point attempts. You know what a leg injury can affect a shooter as much as a hand or wrist energy uh, or injury especially a guy that elevates like Shields so that may be a story right now they don't look quite as explosive as I normally see. That was Lamont Long's deflection that got the loose ball for Kenny Thomas. But, despite all the shooting problems, the Lobos very much in this game. And they've shown us in this tournament, they're a second-half ball club. Thomas draws the double. That releases Gibson. Barely got iron with it. Keith, he will draw the foul on Clayton Shields when Clayton got there a little late. That'll be number two on the senior forward out of Baytown, Texas. Well, Gibson's only a 23% shooter from that three-point line, so that's where the help's coming from off of Kenny Thomas. So he will have open looks. Dickel without any points, but he's made sure everybody else has scored. Well, he went right at the big fellow that time, and it came right back at him. Long for three. Off to the right, shields the rebound, yes, and a foul. His first field goal, and it comes on a putback. Full speed or not, it's just a matter of time before Clayton Shields is a factor in this ball game. He has 6'8", he's a quick jumper. He's not gonna beat you with brute strength inside, he's gotta beat you with quickness and reacting to that basketball. And the time he gets it to drop and gets to the charity stripe as well. Clayton Shields jumps center at the beginning of the game, so you know what a leaper he is. That three-point play, the old-fashioned way, gets him six. And the Lobos back to within just four. Keith working off a pick. The man in motion knocks another one down. He's six out of nine from three-point range. UNLV back up by seven. His three-point shooting, the reason New Mexico's never led. Every time they get close, he cans one. Thomas leaning in. It'll be Brian Keith on the foul after he did it again at the other end. Well, this time, it's, again, the defense is just slow reacting. I mean, a guy that's shooting the ball that well, first of all, you try to limit his ability to catch the basketball, and if he does, you've got to be face-to-face. -face. You cannot give him that much room, Bob. He's going to just keep catching and knocking it down on you. I mean, he's almost getting to that salute status, in my opinion. That's how well he's shooting that thing down. Salute status, huh? Clayton Shields did it one time this year when I was watching him down the pit. Shields to Thomas. Waiting, turning, scoring. Kenny Thomas with a dozen. Eight boards. He played all 20 minutes of the first half. Of course, even when they had Roy Salney, their starters played 85% of the minutes. Whoops. Ball slipping past Dickel from the hands of Kevin Simmons. And suddenly the Rebels come out of the locker room looking out of sync. 
New, Me New Mexico, they lose Royce Olney during the TCU game, and they never recovered from that. And then they go right back home and face BYU, and they're completely out of sync. And Dave Bliss told me today, we finally have gotten some practices under our belt without Royce Olney coming into this tournament. And they have actually improved during the course of games in this tournament. That's be the deflection. Royce Olney in two games against UNLV had 26 points. Averaging 15. Royce made the all wack Mountain second team. And there's how he wore out Bano's perimeter defense. What a great three-point shooter. 83s, 51%. They miss his shooting ability. They miss his ability to run the offense at that point guard spot, and they miss his spirit. That, that was a guy that played with a tremendous amount of heart. The other guys fed off of it. Dickel fighting his oh, way goodness. to the layup. He refused to give up on that drive. The speed out of Dickel with the basketball. Very underrated as a point guard in this league. Early in the season, Baino told me he's as quick as any guard you'll ever see. He just showed us. But Lamont Long, the man they call Froggy because of his slender build, he's got a few shake and bakes of his own. Here's Nesby, high on the arc, short. David Gibson kicks it for Henry. Now the pace quickening in a five-point game. Thomas trying to hit his second three of the night. Lamont Long takes contact. No whistle. And Dave Bliss can't believe it. Right from the get-go, though, David Hall, Scott Thornley, and Mark Reisling showed us there we're going to let the boys play tonight. It's a championship game, and the officials don't want whistles to decide it. Stewart on the drive and the pull-up. Loose ball for Kevin Henry of New Mexico. Four and a half minutes out of halftime. Running Rebels by five. Some feel they're in. Some feel they have to win this one to get into the field of 64. Billy Bano says there's only way, one way to know for sure. Take it out of the committee's hands with a W. I think they've taken care of business over the last two weeks by beating the proper people to end the regular season and then advancing to the finals. I mean, I, this, this league deserves four teams, and they've played their way into that NCAA, in my opinion. Foul on Brian Keith. His second officials timeout. 15-10 remaining in the game. 39-34 UNLV. How intense does it get on a Saturday during championship week? Well, just take a look and we'll let you decide. That tuna. These AC Delco parts are about the most dependable you can buy. They should really help improve your performance. Come on, they're all the same. I think I'm out of this bushel basket. Okay. AC Delco. No matter what you drive, if you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. It is 180 degrees from expected. It is a leather-trimmed interior. And now, it ties as J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing minivan, the new Chrysler Town & Country LXI. Built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side. And now, it's available with $1,000 cash back or a very special low lease rate. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. UNLV up five over New Mexico, and they're doing some good things right now on both ends of the floor. Watch them converge around that ball when it gets to the paint area, and they come up with a steal. But then they instantly get in attack mode, especially when Mark Dickel gets the ball. Now here's a point guard that's vastly underrated, getting 38 minutes out of Dickel. He's running that offense with great efficiency. He threw a great defensive job on Andre Miller and Ray Ralston to advance to the finals. And he's playing with a ton of confidence, and his speed 
with that basketball right now, causing lots of problems for the Lobos. Rebels being out-rebounded, 26-19 by the Lobos, and this, a UNLV team that out-rebounded Utah, 47-35. We couldn't believe it, and I'm sure Rick Majerus looked at those numbers and said, oh my. And then they out-rebounded Fresno, 51-43. So the Rebels borrowing a page out of the Utes book with that rebound differential. David Gibson slashing and finishing, seven for him, and this one back to a three-point game. Not one time tonight has Mark Dickel walked the basketball up the floor. I mean, even if they don't get anything out of the aggressive push, it's making New Mexico run hard to the defensive end every time. That's important when New Mexico only plays six guys. Nesby short. Shields in the corner with the save. UNLV has only scored two points in five and a half minutes of the second half. They led by seven at the half. Pardon me, they've scored five. New Mexico, the big advantage. A chance to possibly tie on this possession. Henry. The air ball three. Nickel for Keith. Got Gibson off the floor. Tom is rejecting Nesby. Rebels will get it back. That ball traveled 94 feet, was shot and blocked, and only seven seconds off the shot clock. Oh, watch Kenny Thomas. It's a nice feed by Dickel. And then, I mean, you just kind of hurt somebody's feelings there when you do that. Good <laughs> gracious. Hurt your self-esteem a little? <laughs> Make you think about it. Gibson grabbing a keep as he tried to keep up with him. That'll be number two on the senior guard. The Big Sky coming up later tonight after going 0-6 in February. The Bobcats of Montana State, two upset victories in the tournament. One went away from their dream. However, they face the regular season champs. The Lumberjacks have won seven in a row, and they're playing at home. That's after Sports Center at 12.30 a.m. tonight. Just in case you thought we only had six games for you. We've got seven today. Long rebound, Lamont Long off to a Brian Keith miss. Will the Lobos equalize this time? They've kind of just start playing catch around the perimeter, New Mexico. I mean, there's not a lot of movement against that zone, and UNLV has them standing. Clayton Shields creates his own shot, and that's his first outside field goal of the night. And the Rebel lead is down to one. New Mexico's got about 5,000 fans here, and they're making plenty of noise right now. They're trying for the double dip today. Their women already won, beating Rice. Here's Dickel, the kick for Nesby. Donovan Stewart keeping it alive. Loose ball, Epps, they got a break. And Epps can't flush it back. Stewart in traffic, finally a whistle. It'll be on Kevin Henry. That was a wild ride. Watch Epps, I mean, he's up top to finish and doesn't get it to drop. UNLV, they've caused a lot of headaches in this tournament when they get teams in scramble situations because of their quickness to react to the basketball. I mean, they, they do it pretty much like a chicken on a cricket. That's quick. <laughs> That's quick, huh? You saw the free throws. New Mexico only committed two team fouls in the first half. Caspers Kambala had two early for Vegas. Only played six minutes, he's back. And they'll check in Kevin Simmons for the shooter, Donovan Stewart, if he knocks this one down. It'll have to look a lot better than the first one to get the net. Gardner reminds me of some of the putting we saw today. Some of the finishing not that good at the free throw line. 12-20 remaining, low scoring game, a one point difference. Lobos trying to get the lead for the first time. 
Back to Thomas. Dickel doubles down. Lamont Long, he's been a slasher. Takes some contact. That'll be a block on Kambala, his third. Bobby Kenny Thomas has really improved as a passer this year. I mean, that's a tough double team with Kambala involved, but he's got the strength and the vision over the top to get it to Long and just let him attack the rim. That's where number three is at his best offensively. Lamont with seven tonight. Now Kevin Simmons will check back in. And Kambala averaging about a foul every two minutes of his playing time tonight. Excuse me, by at times, Kenny Thomas, when the ball goes to him throughout his career, when he's doubled up, it gets frozen, but he's starting to be more active as a passer, and that's important for your low post guy to be able to spot people. Well, Lobos tie failed to take the lead, so they still haven't done that tonight. Simmons. Nesby. Back to Kevin against Shields. Thought he was going to switch to the left hand. Evidently didn't feel comfortable doing that. And the Vegas offense has really stalled. Eight and a half minutes. They've scored five points in this half. Thomas for Shields. Big guys kind of reversing their roles there. That's we thought about the three for a moment. That's those interchangeable parts I talked about that Dave Bliss can throw at you. Gibson for Shields. Back to the point guard. Slashing underneath. Long. Shot clock at two. It got ironed. Nesby got hit from behind. Looks like a New Mexico reach-in foul. Kenny Thomas saying, hey, wait a minute. I've been getting killed all night long, and you're going to call me for reaching in? It's his first. An emotional week in the WAC. Brian Keith's been spectacular. Kenny Thomas dominating. And Billy Baino's Rebels trying to knock off Dave Bliss's Lobos. Is this the secret to 7-Up's crisp new taste? We'll never tell. Try the crisp new taste of 7-Up. It's everything you'll like about 7-Up. Just more of it. 7-Up, now with a crisp new taste. You're in there, Miss Plum. I can smell your recently delivered piping hot pizzeria pizza. And while I'm appalled at your wicked little plan to lure me into your tawdry web with the promise of a deliciously topped pizza, Miss Plum, I am but a man, weakened by the siren's call of a well-risen crust. <laughs> it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. She wants me. For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. This is Imagine TV. Why don't you slip into something a little more comfortable? All right. Mercury moving upward as we answer the question, okay, Mr. Okay, she wasn't with me. She was out all night with the Grand Marquis. <gasps> the Mercury Grand Marquis. Till next time, imagine yourself in a Mercury. Well, we're in a bit of a scoring lull here in the WAC Championship. Aw, oh, come on, guys. It's not that way at all. But the ESPN magazine does come out on March 12th. Jimmy Dykes, I cannot wait to see the basketball analyst swimsuit issue. That will be something something to behold. <laughs> yeah, I hear right now it's between me and, and Digger and Dick in the initial swimsuit issue as oh far as my. the cover. ESPN magazine debuting next week. Dan Patrick will have a preview show. <laughs> Middle of the week. Don't miss it, folks. <laughs> if I get beat out by those two guys, oh, boy. Wednesday at 7.30, the preview show. Nesby. He could be a cover guy the way he's been playing in this tournament. Kambala throws up a prayer. And right now, this is about as ugly as the Rebels have looked on offense in this entire tournament. 
Is fatigue a factor, Jimmy? This is their fourth game in five nights. Well, now, here's what we got to talk about. UNLV has struggled the entire game when they've got to be facing that half-court man defense in New Mexico. They've got to keep it going up and down. That's how they win this game. New Mexico will make you look ugly if you try to go half-court to half-court on them. Turnover. The Lobos just can't get the lead. Simmons got shields off the floor. The pull-off is down. Kevin Simmons with his first basket since halftime. That breaks the tie. And that's the first Rebel basket in a while. Again, triggered by Mark Dickel. Pushing the ball from the defense to the offensive end with about four dribbles from free throw line to free throw line. He might set a whack record for assists in this game tonight at nine at the half. He's tied the record now, the fourth whack guard ever with 11. Thomas, shot clock winding down, and Kenny has 14. He has been the inside force of this tournament. It's Kambala, a foul away from the ball, setting a moving pick. That'll be Casper's fourth. Well, there's the semis in the Big West. Pacific ahead right now. Utah State won its game. We'll see that championship tomorrow. You see Kambala sit with four fouls, and that's what Kenny Thomas can do to interior defenders because of his size, his quickness, his smarts. One field goal in the last 9.45 or so for the running Rebels. How can you have a drop like that and still be tied? Thomas. It'll stay with the Lobos. Shot clock at 15. I mean, look at this. I mean, Kambala is the strongest low post defender in the league as far as just physical ability. Kenny Thomas made the statement the last time they played. You seem doing a nice job of pushing him off the block area, but with him sitting, Kenny Thomas now is free to go back to work on those smaller, slimmer inside players. Here he goes. He's a great passer. Shot clock at one. I thought the buzzer went off before that ball hit the iron. 11 rebounds for Thomas tonight. Henry for long. And Thomas has to touch it. He's got an advantage down low. Epps gets there late. You know, this is a busy week for the WAC. Some conferences don't hold their women's tournament at the same site as the men's tournament. But Carl Benson and the staff do here. There's also a great golf event coming up here next week. 15 of the top golf teams in the nation, including UNLV, New Mexico, SMU, and TCU, going to be playing over at Desert Inn, one of the great golf courses here in Vegas. Dave Johnson, the director of golf over there. Keep your eye on UNLV, the number one rated golf team in the nation. They've won four tournaments already this year. We had a look at that facility today. Dwayne Knight will take his team over there next week. Boy, you like to play golf. Vegas is a heck of a place. Yeah, it's first class. And unfortunately, you and I, our golf scores kind of resembled like we were playing TCU in basketball in the high 90s. <laughs> That's not good. Billy Tubbs scores today. Hey, they do have the lead, though, the Lobos, finally. 42-41. This thing is turning into a grinder. 8.15 to go. And we're in the low 40s. Special play to free up Keith. I mean, you don't see too many of those out of UNLV. Simmons for three. That time, Keith playing point guard to penetrate. Kevin Simmons with a dozen. Although the special play was designed to get Keith the shot, they rushed out at him and it freed up another shooter on the perimeter. That's the attention that Keith's starting to draw. Oh, Lamont Long, what a soft touch. That's got to be tough. You're flying into that lane, and then you've got the feathery touch to make the ball roll in. Tied again. Rick Pajeris told me if there's one guy that he could have off of New Mexico, he would start with Lamont Long. That's the type of versatile, tough, defensive, solid numbers kid that he is. Dickel short with three. Kept alive for a moment by Epps. But again, that three-point that three point rebound just rifling off the glass and the iron. So difficult to control when you're right underneath. 
Shields, well off, Epps the rebound. Okay, the first team that puts together a 5-0 run might win this thing. Nesby, quick on the move, gets the foul on Long. That'll be Lamont's first. Bob, it's, it's very important when you're playing man-to-man -man defense, like New Mexico's doing, that you hunker down and get after folks because they can beat you off the dribble and Billy Baino's squad starting to do it. 6.53 remaining in the WAC championship game. You get the feeling the team that wants it the most will get this one. place to eat with outstanding value and quality entertainment nobody beats Arizona Charlie's and if you want an atmosphere that lets you feel right at home with friendly people and warm hospitality you guessed it nobody beats Arizona Charlie's and when it comes to winning remember hand for hand nobody has more payouts than Arizona Charlie's nobody where the West gets wild if you're looking to save big coin on tires, then roll into Sears, where you'll always find guaranteed unbeatable prices. Like these Guardsman 40 tires. They're amazingly low. As low as $44 for a set of four. And with thousands of tires in stock, finding the set that's right for you is easy. So get in, get tires, and get rolling. Sears Auto Center. Had a bunch of ties lately. UNLV has only scored 10 points this entire half. So, Jimmy Dykes, what are they talking about over there with 6.53 to go? I think UNLV has to be talking about let's keep getting things done off the dribble. Now, that's important. New Mexico, one-on-one -on -one defense the last seven minutes of this ball game. Here's the attitude they have to play it with. If I'm guarding the basketball now, and I'm New Mexico, I have to be thinking, I don't need help, I don't need help, I don't need help. That's the attitude you go out and take someone on. The other four guys for New Mexico have to be thinking, he's gonna get beat, he's gonna get beat, he's gonna get beat. You put the two together, you got good man-to-man -man defense for the last seven minutes out of the Lobos. Simmons going away from Thomas. Oh, and Reavers Epps, he ended up on Kenny's shoulders. Isaiah Epps, an exclamation point of the first basket. Rebels by two. Thomas high post. Gibson entry. Taken away by Epps. Here comes Dickel. Always pushing it. Nesby off the dribble. Flying. Drawing the foul before the shot. I mean, watch Isaiah Epps. Thomas comes over to help out, and he's assigned to Epps, and as a result, he just goes to the rim and boom shucks the thing down. I mean, there's no, there's no finesse in this guy's game. It's an all-power offensive rebound type stuff, and he just did it as well as you can do it. Full timeout, Dave Bliss, Rebels by two. Said he was gonna call us, tell us what it feels like. Clear across America. The one name people still rely on is Cellular One. Hello? Billy, some advice. Enjoy the 7-Up, and then look on specially marked packages to see if you've won some exciting prizes like basketball gear or free 7-Up. I'm a winner. Sure you are, Billy. Sure you are. This is Imagine TV. That's the last stitch. Hey, has anyone seen the keys to my Mercury? There's no one to fight here. Maybe he just wanted to drive his Mercury Villager. 
<laughs> Till next time, imagine yourself in a Mercury. See what I mean? Yep. You better update the manual. What do you mean it's going to take five months? Well, first we gotta order the paper, then we gotta order the ink. Choose a typeface. Print layout. Color separation. Font size. Proofs. We're not even talking about collating yet. You better update the manual. There's business as usual, and there's e-business as usual. HP. Expanding possibility. In a ball game like this, every basket is so important, some more than others. This last one was a show tune to the years of Billy Baino. Here's why. <laughs> <laughs> Cover up down below. That's the attitude that this team is playing with over the last seven or eight ball games. And it's interesting, yesterday Kevin Simmons right there, about this juncture in the game, is tied up and they took a timeout and Billy Baino drew up a play for Tyrone Nesby and F. Simmons interrupted and said, Coach, just get me the ball. My guy guarding me can't stop me. Just get me the ball. They did. He gets the shot and the free throw to drop. And that's what you want for your club the last six minutes if you're Billy Baino. Again, that's attack. It. That timeout came last night with Vegas up by one point. And they were wonderful down the stretch in beating Fresno 76-67. Billy called a timeout because his guys were gassed with about nine minutes to go. I'm not so sure Simmons didn't step up in the last timeout and say the same thing. <laughs> Get me the ball and let me go to work. I mean, the mentality of your club come conference tournament time and postseason time is so, so important. I had a nice visit with Billy Baino this afternoon, and he told me, he said, I, I cannot ask any more out of what my seven or eight guys have given me. And again, they've done it without Keon Clark. They're playing together. They're playing with a purpose. And they have confidence oozing for 40 minutes when they step on the floor right now. Kevin Simmons misfiring. Ryan Keith, one three in this half, five in the first half. They quit switching on him. They're playing straight man defense on Brian Keith. Boy, some ugly free throws, but big rebounding by Tyrone Nesby. We'll go under six minutes on this UNLV possession. He flashing out high. Shield stopped him from shooting. So you make him a dribble where you've done your job defensively. Gibson doing a pretty solid job right now on Keith. Nesby skipping it. Simmons facing up into the paint, trying to hold off Thomas. The left-hander. And Isaiah Epps just didn't know when to jump again. Ball kept bouncing straight up. He never could get a read on it. Lobos down by two. They've had one one-point lead tonight. Three-point shot, Lamont Long, a dozen for him. That's only New Mexico's fourth of the night in 22 attempts. Lamont Long is the third guy on the perimeter capable of stepping up and knocking down shots at 35% on the year. You get he and Henry and Shields all three on the perimeter, then you got your hands full. Uh, Simmons oh. lost the handle on that one. Tried to baby that shot up there. Will New Mexico take over at this juncture of the game like they did in their two previous? They had to fight off the Tulsa team that had them on the ropes. They took over on a TCU team that had them befuddled defensively at halftime. That's a two for Clayton Shields. He's into double figures. And the Lobos had their largest lead three. Billy Bano needs a 20. These last four minutes and 28 seconds will have a bearing on what happens. There's still an interesting scenario here. Hawaii's RPI rating has jumped up. UNLV's RPI has gone from 79 to 52 in the last couple of days.
Wyoming and Colorado State upset in the quarterfinals of this tournament. The men's selection special, Fowler, Phelps, Vital, and Buckner tomorrow, presented by GTE. Then Robin Roberts, Mimi Griffin, Rebecca Lobo with the women's selection special, presented by State Farm to follow. Two solid hours of basketball brackets and analysis tomorrow night. To me, the bottom line still with this conference is it certainly deserves four teams. I agree. I mean, you look at... The Atlantic 10, the Big 10, and you take the top five or six out of this league, the top five or six out of those leagues, and put them on a neutral floor, and you've got a war on your hands. This is an athletic, underexposed league, and they certainly deserve four. Clayton Shields with his third foul. It's time for Kevin Simmons and the Rebels to start knocking down some free throws. One all night. Billy Bano's third year. He's been great on this floor. He's won 40 of 53 at Thomas and Mack. Not quite a Tarkanian-like percentage, but give him time. New Mexico very, very good at defending without fouling. They've shot about 150 more free throw attempts on the year than their opponents, so that free throw stat that we just put up, that's pretty common for New Mexico. They play with their feet, not their hands. Lobos by two, 345 to go. Thomas playing out high. He'll stay out there. Now he creeps to the free throw lane. Boy, what a night Lamont Long's had slashing to the basket. That would have been unbelievable for that one to go down. Here's Keith pushing. A foul. Couldn't get it. And they're looking at Clayton Shields again. I don't think so. It'll be David Gibson who is right next to him. As Brian Keith continues to push the ball just like his buddy Mark Dickel does. I mean, that's the story of this game for UNLV. Two things. The ability of Dickel and Keefe to push the ball off the dribble, and then the other three or four guys committed to run. Every time, every time UNLV, all five guys are getting out and sprinting from the defense to the offensive end. It doesn't do any good if you just got one guy running. UNLV, everyone's committed. His best long-range game of the tournament. Who knocked it out? Epps. So, Vegas passes up a chance to score again. Looks like Billy Bano wants a full timeout. Not going to let him have it. Play on. Yeah, Billy thought that was a TV timeout. We are under four minutes, but Dave Bliss had called a full timeout right. with 6.18 remaining, and that was only 35 seconds after the under eight-minute timeout. So that serves as the four-minute timeout. You got all that? I understand you. Okay. I understand right now, too, that if I'm New Mexico, Kenny Thomas has to be involved, most likely. Shields. Not a great shot. Thomas keeps it alive on the bouncer out to David Gibson. 255 and counting. Lobos by two. There he is. Right at him. Right at him. Kenny Thomas with 17. The only guy that can stop Kenny Thomas man-to-man -man is sitting on the bench for UNLV, Casper's Kambala. He's too strong for everybody else inside. Get him the ball if you're New Mexico. But Thomas going at him, Kambala with four fouls and probably 11 or 12 minutes of playing time tonight. Now, Bano will call his final 20-second timeout. And he does it with 15 on the shot clock. Kenny Thomas understands the importance of getting his body on you and keeping it on you. Now this time he starts at the high post and flashes to the elbow, but because he gets his body on the defender, he can just turn and power over him and there's no foul call. You know, you see a replay sequence like this, Jimmy, it reminds me of something Digger told me several years ago. He said a lot of ex-coaches are ex-coaches because they didn't have a center. 
that's what you need right there. You know what's unique about this guy? You saw it on the last replay. He doesn't need a screen to get open. Right. I mean, he understands how to operate without that basketball, and he stood at that high post area as a decoy, and then boom, cut to that right block, which is also kind of unique because he's mostly effective on the left side of the floor. But he is a load. Rumble's down by four. Four-point lead sure seems like a lot right now, doesn't it? <laughs> Keith for Dickel. The bouncer. Epps back to Dickel. The three! What more do you want out of your point guard? I mean, he runs that offense. They back off on him. He jumps up and sticks it. One point game, 155 to go. They're chanting Rebels here in Vegas. Lamont Long can't quiet them down. Simmons the rebound. UNLV with a chance for the lead. Kenny Thomas never touched the ball in the paint on that possession. Who's next for Vegas? Keeps on the baseline. He flashes out. Dickel down to Nesby. The jumper. Yes. Rebels on top. His first basket of the second half. 110 remaining, and Dave Bliss calls the timeout. Billy Baino, he's out at midcourt, telling the crowd to get in it. New Mexico makes it a full timeout. 1-11 to go. Rebels continue to make plays. This is Imagine TV. This Mercury Sable sure is roomy. Yeah, but why don't we ever go anywhere? Because we don't have any feet. No feet. I love you even more than I did before I had amnesia. I think. Even more than your Mercury. I have a Mercury. I'd forgotten. Until next time, imagine yourself in a Mercury. Why do I come out here? Because the playing field's level, but the stairs never are. Because if I can't get frost-brewed Coors Light to the fans cold, those guys in the Rockies froze their butts for nothing. So I scale concrete every night. Because somewhere there's a guy eating peanuts or some nachos, and he's thinking of me. Coors Light! Coors Light! When it comes to running a car, there's really only one place to go. National Car Rental, the official car rental company of ESPN. So what are you waiting for? Let's go! ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up. 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler invite you to try the crisp new taste of 7-Up. And in part by Mercury. Go ahead, imagine yourself in a Mercury. And by HP. The power of imaging now belongs to people. Hewlett Packard, expanding possibilities. This might be the most confident team in the nation that's lost 12 games. They just have a feeling that they're going to win on their floor. And a couple of trips down, Jimmy Dykes, they made some big plays here late. Well, they get it to their guy that's got the best ability to make big shots. Watch Tyrone Nesby. He's 6'6". The defender on him is only 6'4". He realizes it, gets his shoulder square, and just jumps up and shoots it over him. You've got to make sure that everyone's matched up on the proper assignment at this point in the ball game if you're Dave Bliss. Right now, a 6'4 guy can't stop Tyrone Nesby down low. Dave Bliss using both of his full timeouts. He has a 20 left. Vegas with the possession arrow. Lamont Long. Dickel stops him. One minute to go. Henry for Gibson. Kenny Thomas is begging for that basketball. Henry way out there. And the rebound by Epps. He boxed out. No, it was Nesby. He boxed out Thomas beautifully. Oh, my, my, my. 
Kenny Thomas is your man, and he doesn't touch it. Now Billy Bano. This will have to be a full. He's used all of his 20s. 22 on the shot clock. 30.7 remaining. Thomas doesn't get a touch. Vegas close to a win. Hi, my name is Sierra, and this is my very own Gateway commercial. Hello, welcome to South Dakota. If you want to buy a computer, call my mom. She's right back here. Hi, Mom. Hi, Sierra. She knows a lot about computers, and she's really nice. Many of two processor and monitor for under 2000 She really is nice. You betcha. You should call my mom. Gateway computers feature Intel Pentium 2 processors. Give us a call. You've got a friend in the business. The good old days of supermarket shopping. When nothing stood between you and your next meal. Nothing. But today, there are materials that help lock out harmful contaminants and reduce spoilage, keeping us safe and the food we eat fresh. Plastics make it possible. So now, the rest is history. 30.7 remaining. When Vegas brings the ball in bounds, there will be 22 on the shot clock. What's New Mexico going through right here? Well, they're going through some frustration right now with Kenny Tunnel. Look at him. Give me the ball. I've got 17 points and 12 rebounds. I got a slimmer inside guy on me. Let me touch it. Outside shot goes. Now watch his reaction. Why? Why would you shoot that? Kenny Thomas, I agree with you. I feel your frustration right now. You're the guy. You got him here yesterday by wearing out TCU's inside players. Touch it. Go introduce yourself to everybody during that last time out. Say hi, I'm Kenny Thomas. I'm your All-American. Exactly. One point game. And a foul. It'll be on Henry. Two seconds off the clock. That'll be Henry's second. And it's not a bad idea, quite frankly, to put Vegas on the free throw line. As we mentioned last night, their guards are not that great standing still. Ryan Keefe, 62%. The man here, Mark Dickel, 67th. This will be his first of the night. And this for a two-point lead. As a team, they're two for ten. Now, how important is this next one? Well, and equally important, if you're New Mexico and you've got inside position on that lane, you step in, you take out the legs of the guy above you, and you don't let them get it if it's a miss. Doesn't matter. Clutch. Shot clock is off. New Mexico calling its final 20. You know what? If I'm New Mexico, I drop a play initially that might get a wide open three point look out of Clayton Shield because at 6 8, he's got a chance to get it off. If that's not there, the ball's got to go inside to Kenny Thomas. There's plenty of time left. At worst, Kenny Thomas gets the free throw strike and cuts this thing down to a one-point game. It makes UNLV handle the ball again and make free throws again. Look at that. Four for 25. Clayton Shields is 0 for 8. Brian Keith, 18 points on his six. UNLV has not been to the NCAA since 91. They had an NIT in 93. They went last year when Billy Bano's team went 22 and 10. And here we go. Three-point game. Final 20 seconds. Long. Way off. Shields, they got to get it back out there. Long for three again. No. Rebound, Nesby. And a foul with 9.9 .9 remaining. Bano's thinking one thing, hit the first one, and we lead by two possessions. Sometimes it 
takes a little body English to win a tournament. Rebels by four. UNLV calling the timeout. The initial three-point shot that New Mexico put up wasn't a good enough look. The ball should have went inside to Kenny Thomas, let him get to that free throw stride or score or both, and extend this ball game. They fire up a quick one that's not a great look out of not a great three-point shooter. And now their back is really against the wall. How about this? Talk about crunch time. After Dave Bliss's team had its largest lead, 51-47, UNLV goes on an 8-0 run. See, that's the three-point shot I talked about the first one. The defense was all over him. Now, the second one's a pretty good look, but it doesn't get to drop. Shields and Henry are your best three-point shooters on the floor. And this is a guy, first of all, let me say this. Yes, he's a great three-point shooter, but he's also experienced enough to understand Kenny Thomas is the man. I would think if Royce only was on the floor, he would have had something to do with Kenny Thomas touching that basketball. That's how important he is. One more free throw for Tyrone Nesby. The big thing, though, he hit the first one. What a run by this club. What a job by that coach. Again, about four weeks ago, he sensed that this club has something special left in him. You're seeing it tonight. Five-point lead for Vegas. Here comes Gibson. The three for Long. Short. Epps touches it. Pickles got it. UNLV NCAA. <laughs> week, buddy. Pandemonium in Vegas. A whack tournament that saw Utah, the top seed, knocked out in the quarterfinals. That opened the door for Vegas. But it also opened the door for New Mexico. And UNLV had to win four games. They beat a solid Hawaii club, knocked off Utah, a good Fresno State team last night. New Mexico tonight. Jimmy Dykes, they didn't do it the easy way. It was as hard as it possibly could have been. These guys in the red uniforms, we kind of sensed it early in the week. They were not going to be denied on their home floor. They had a mission, mission accomplished. The final score from Las Vegas, UNLV 56, New Mexico 51 for the WAC championship. Sports Center is next. For Jimmy Dykes and our entire ESPN Championship week crew, I'm Bob Carpenter. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The party continues in Vegas. On this edition of SportsCenter, we'll... Up and ...somewhere in between. The running Rebels had the fans sitting on pins and needles, culminating with a ticket to the big dance. Producer Mark Hoskins spent hours searching tapes and finding just the right play to choose and close out this season with the help of singer-slash-baseball player Garth Brooks. Hey, enjoy the dance. Good night, everybody.